Good morning, นะครับ everyone. How are you today? I hope that all of you are fine. t e r a s i t what does it mean? By waving your hand? I, I I just got a mental breakdown yesterday, so I don't know how I'm feeling. Oh no! I hope that um the math course will heal you more or less. I h oh. can hope so. Okay, right. I hope you get better soon. Okay, n a t a m o n that's great. Nice to know that. But it seems like you just like you just wake up. Look at your eyes. Well, right. but I'm in my exercising. Oh really? Wow, that's great. That's great. You got to work out in the morning. Yeah, I hope that I should have the time like that as well. I know that it will be good for your health anyway. All right. Okay. I have everyone. So um, let's talk about like what we have to um, learn. I have on our uh, math class. Okay. All right. Okay. So on the last class, we hang on. Let me just like uh, maximize. It. Yeah. On the last class, we talk about like um, many parts of the graphs already. I have, and you can see that whenever we talk about the graph, I have, as I told you um, for this class, I have, we try to focus on um, the linear graph. I have most of the time, so that means it come with the um, linear function. I have, so. Um, The things that normally we use in order to solve our graph problem in here, we try to just like um, find the slope in order to help us, นะครับ and we use like some of the rules, นะครับ in order to just like um, get the value of the slopes, นะครับ from like for example if we have like to compare, นะครับ and find the value of um, the function of one graph while we get like Um, the property of another graph, we may have to use the property of the slope or the rule of slope to help us. Okay, so in this one, so today we are going to talk about the next example. Okay, on the last time we find the um, we find we try to find the function have the linear function when we know the um, slope. นะครับ of that um of that function and also we know some um um I mean like some points นะครับ in that function already นะครับ we may have to use the rule that we learned before that is like um the point slope form นะครับ or we have to use like um some other kind of the property like the slope intercept form in order to set up the linear function นะครับ all right So now let's continue talking about the next slide. In this one, in this one, suppose f is a linear function such that f 1 n equals to 5 and f x decreases by four units for every three units increase in x, then find x. In this one. นะครับ what are we going to do นะครับ um so this one I'll just like let you spend five minutes in this one to do it by yourself first นะครับ and then when you get the linear function already นะครับ when you get that um I'm sorry uh when you get that function already I want you to find f x find f x here นะครับ um uh, let me just like clarify this um this problem a bit When you want, um, when you ask to find f x, that means you ask to find that function. <clears throat> so um, the form of that function will be in the form like f x equals to something x plus c, something like that. This is what I want. I have. When we have to find the x, I have find, sorry, find the f x. It works like that one. I have. Okay, and also in this one, it tells you that. You are asked to find linear function, so that means at most the exponent, นะครับ, will be just x, นะครับ, something x, นะครับ, like a x plus b, something like that. This is what it tells you. And for f one equals to five in here, 
it tell us about the point นะครับ f1 equals to five นะครับ it means that the value um if in the parenthesis one here means that the value of x นะครับ is one and this one five is the value of y นะครับ y and f x are the same thing so that means at least we know the point that is one five นะครับ the coordinate one five this one right so um the other one is that decreases by four unit of um for every three unit increase in here this one is the hint to tell us นะครับ to think about like another point something like that Okay, these are just like the thing that this problem tell us. So I let you spend five minutes, นะครับ in order to um, find out the fx, please, นะครับ So if you have the answer already, นะครับ please write down your answer in the chat box for me, นะครับ Please write down the answer in the chat box for me. The format, นะครับ of the um. Answer should be f x equals to something plus something, I have something x plus something like this. Okay, so now time start, ครับ Please find your answer. I will just like um prepare the answer for you as well. นะครับ Fifteen seconds left, นะครับ So it seems like three of you, นะครับ Hang on. Um, Tara, Padipan, and Sia Pon. I have you get the same answer. Okay. Okay. Thumbs up. I have that is negative four um, over three x. I have plus nineteen over thirteen. Nina as well get the same answer. I have now let's see. I have whether this um, um, your and of of your answers are correct or not. I have so in this one. Um, Firstly, I will try to find the um, coordinates first. นะครับ So for the first coordinate, we get already. นะครับ The first one we get one five already. นะครับ Okay. And after that, you can see that in this one, it said that okay, f x. Decreases by four unit means that y decreases by four unit every three units increasing in x. That means, นะครับ if we have x, okay, let's see. If I have like f one plus three, นะครับ this one I increase. Okay, sorry, my my um zoom was disconnected before. I said that okay. In this one, it said that okay. Um, when the three units increase in x, means that if x is increases, นะครับ Originally, I have one, right? I have one. I have f as one, x as one, and then I just um increase by three. The answer for y, นะครับ Or f x, นะครับ That will I will get is that I get, นะครับ Originally, I get five, right? For f one, decreases by four units. นะครับ that is that is one นะครับ so that means in this one I get f four นะครับ equals to one นะครับ this is from I just take from the hint that it give us so for the second coordinate I get one four นะครับ I get one four so hang on four one I'm sorry not one four four one X is four and Y is one. นะครับ Yeah. So when I get the answer already, นะครับ When I get the answer already in here for the coordinate, is it lacking now? Is it lacking now? ครับ It's much better. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I I think there's something wrong with my my um uh, internet connection here. Okay. นะครับ So now let's continue. นะครับ In this one, I just like try to use now uh, from the hint of this example, um, to tell us that okay, um, uh, y, นะครับ or f x will be decreases by four unit. So from the original one that I get, f one equals to five, นะครับ then I get five minus four, นะครับ because it decreases by four unit, and 
for every three units increasing in x means that originally I have like x that is one, then I add it by three because it's three unit increasing in x. That means I get f4 equals to one, or when I turn it to be the coordinate, it is for one in this one. Okay, when I get this one already, I have the second step that I have to do is that I try to find slope m. When I find a slope m, it's equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In here, I just substitute by the value that I have got. I get 1. 1 minus 5 over 4 minus 1. Then I get the slope that is negative 4 over 3. So the equation can be written as y minus 5 equals to negative 4 over 3 times x minus 1. Uh, so if you remember, we get it from y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. Uh, this is from um, this is from the um, standard form of the um, linear equation when you know the slope and when you know the point. Uh, that is from point slope form. So in this one, we just simplify it. Uh, then we get y minus 5 equals to negative 4 over 3x plus 4 over 3. Then I get y equals to negative 4 over 3x plus 4 over 3 plus 5. Uh -huh. Then I get y equals to negative 4 over 3x plus 19 over 3. Uh -huh. So in this one, if I just try to change it to be fx, then I get fx equals to negative 4 over 3x plus 19 over 3. I uh have -huh. this is my answer. All right. Okay. So I uh have -huh. this is the answer that we get. I uh have -huh. this is the answer that we get. So that means doesn't matter. I uh have -huh. in this case. I use the value. Um, I use the value one five to substitute in um, this um, formula. Uh -huh. If you use like um, value four one uh -huh, to substitute in this formula, you get the same um, f x. Uh -huh. okay. Right. So up to this point, do you have any questions? Have anyone for this example? All right, okay. So this is just like a bit tricky that we just like switch. When we know the points, we try the, um, we find the slope and after that we can find the equation anyway. Now, you can see that in this example, we try to have some of the applying of this kind of graph um, a little bit more. Now we talk about like the application excuse me, we have um, to apply the application of graph in the real life, uh, okay. So um, when we talk about the graph uh, in the real life, one thing that we um, normally have to use graph to solve uh, in um, the real world problem is about the break-even analysis, uh, the break-even analysis. Um, I think that for anyone who is in um, BBA programs, uh, I'm sure that all of you have heard about the like uh, break-even analysis before, but for other for other of you who are not in the BBA program, so have, let me just explain to you first. When we talk about break-even analysis, so have, um, it means that when you, I mean, like assume that you want to sell something, so have, the cost so have, that you produce something equals to the revenue, uh, that point is what we call break-even analysis. For example, if you produce, let's say, um, t-shirt, 
the total cost of t-shirt is um, let's say one thousand dollars if you sell that t-shirt and you get one thousand dollars that is what we call break even you don't lost any money after that that means if you can sell over the break even you get the profit but anyway when you can sell that um t-shirt but you cannot reach one thousand dollars that is your cost you lost the money right so that's why you will talk about we will talk about the break even analysis in this case uh, um, now we have to, <coughs> excuse me we have to understand these terms first revenue cost and profit what are they revenue is the money that you receive uh, that you earn maybe from selling the products or services uh, have for the revenue uh, have, um, we have the formula that we use to calculate the revenue that is from not price uh, um, not prints uh, price per item times number per item uh, please change this one is not print price per item uh, have, multiply by numbers of items uh, have, or unit price uh, have, sometimes we call it as unit price or price per unit. Multiply it by number of items. For example, if we say that we have t-shirt, we produce 100 t-shirts. Each t-shirt costs around, uh, sorry, each t-shirt you sell it for $12. The revenue in here is 12 multiply by 100 uh -huh. that is one thousand two hundred dollars uh -huh. in this one this is what we call revenue uh -huh, or the money that you earn okay next cost for the cost when you produce any products you have the cost uh -huh. cost consists of two parts the first part is what we call fixed cost the other one is what we call variable cost Fixed cost means that it is the cost that does not depend on number of items that you produce. Uh -huh. But anyway, you have to pay. For example, if we say that, okay, in order to produce a t-shirt, you have to rent a factory and a warehouse. Uh -huh. So doesn't matter whether you produce for 1,000 um, t-shirts or you produce nothing for example in the co during the covid period time um, fixed cost you have to pay for it anyway you cannot avoid so that means if they say that okay um, for the rental uh, of the factory you have to pay um, five thousand dollars per month uh, that means okay when you produce zero items, you pay five thousand. When you pay, uh, when you produce a um, hundred thousand items, you pay five thousand. Uh -huh. That is the fixed cost. Uh -huh. Or what else can be the fixed cost? If you just have to pay for the salary of the uh, employees, that is a fixed cost as well because they work for you. Doesn't matter whether you produce anything or not, but you have to pay. Apart from that one, if we are talking about like internet fee that you have to pay monthly to the internet service provider because you have a website of the company. And then when your customer would like to order the products online, um, um, you have to just like use the internet in order to check for the, um, for the order or something like that. And we said that, okay, we have to pay $20 per month for the internet fee. That means, you have to pay twenty dollars. Doesn't matter whether you produce anything or not. This is the fixed cost. Uh -huh. While the variable cost is different. Variable cost depends on number of items you produce. The more you produce, the more variable cost that you have to pay. Uh -huh. So that means if you say that okay, in order to produce the T-shirt, uh -huh, the cost per one T-shirt is five dollars. That means if you multiply, sorry, if you produce 1,000 t-shirts, you have to pay five times 1,000 if the um, cost of that production is the flat rate. Uh -huh. But I mean, like some of the production, they say that, okay, the more you pay, sorry, the more you produce, 
the less you pay. But the things that I have to tell you is that the less you pay means that the um, the num um, the cost per unit is cheaper, something like that. For example, I have if you go to uh, produce. I mean, if you want to just like print some books, if you want to print some book, let's say, um, they may say that, okay, if you want to print one book, okay, if you want to print one book, uh, they say that, okay, they charge you 500 baht. But if you produce 20 books, they say that it's 2,000 baht only. You can see that it's different now because in this one it's not a flat rate anymore 500 baht per one book that means if you produce 20 books if you use just like the regular formula you multiply 500 by 20 it will be equivalent to 10,000. but in this one they charge you just 2000 baht per 20 books only what does it mean it means that this company would like you to produce at least 20 books I have otherwise if you just produce one book only the cost will be very very expensive something like that I have so this this happened in the real life um, that's why I'm sure that most of you have heard uh, the word about like retailing and wholesaling but the more you buy the products the price per piece is cheaper than when you buy just like um, one or two pieces only I have for example, I remember that when I went to um, um, what to say the wholesaling area in Thailand, <clears throat> they call it as something. I have it's on like nearby um, where where about Yorat or Chinatown area. I remember that I want I I, I went to see like <clears throat> what to say. Um, I went to see. The what to say the tumbler I have the tumbler I have the water tumbler that I just like would like to buy it for uh, being the gift for my friends I have the New Year gift. They say that okay if I buy one tumbler it cost me one fifty baht. But if I just like want to buy um one dozen of it I have that means twelve tumblers. It cost me just like um, 800 baht per 12 items. You can see that this is the wholesale price. That means if you just like buy one, I'm um, sorry, if I just buy it as a retailing, just five something items or five tumbler, it costs the same as when I buy for the whole 12 tumblers. So that's why this is what we call variable cost that you have to know. Normally, in order to produce anything, the variable cost must be um, um, calculated properly. So that you can find the total cost that we have got. Uh, and when we want to find out whether we receive the profit or not, or loss, profit or loss, profit is the money that you gain over the revenue that you receive after you deduct the cost already. So to calculate the profit, it comes from revenue subtracted by cost. For example, if you purchase, sorry, if you sold I have the product for 10,000 baht, while the cost is 8,000, then the profit is 2,000 baht, something like this. I have, this is the profit. But on the other way around, if you can sell 7,000 baht only, while the cost is 8,000, then you don't get the profit because the profit is negative 1,000. In here, we call it as lost instead. Okay, so remember that profit come from revenue subtracted by cost. In the reality, sometimes we say that, okay, you cannot overprice something because the revenue come from just like, um, I mean, the price per unit multiplied by number of units. Suppose we say that, okay, the price per unit is 10 baht, uh, and the uh, um, number of unit is 1,000, then you get 10,000 baht as a revenue. So in this case, you can see that if 
he said that okay the government fixed the price นะครับ10บาท that means at most the revenue per time that you sell or the uh, per month that you sell is 10,000 only you don't have more than 10,000 baht as your revenue how can you get more profit you have to reduce the cost because sometimes some cost can be reduced If you can reduce the cost more than 8,000, for example, if you can reduce cost to be 7,000 only, that means you get 3,000 profit, not 2,000 anymore. Uh, so that's why if you cannot increase the price, you have to reduce the cost to gain more profit. Uh, okay. That, but that anyway, that one go beyond our class. I just like want to talk about revenue cost and profit only. When we talk about break even points, Uh, it means that when the cost equals to revenue, uh, the cost equals to revenue. Uh, so what do we have to know about this? When we have just like these terms, uh, revenue, cost, profit, and break even already. Uh, the next thing that I just like want to show you is that how do we gonna find the, um, the um, values Um, from like this information, uh, okay. For example, uh, in this one, I said that a drug can be made for 10 bahts per unit. Uh, a drug can be made for 10 bahts per unit. Can somebody tell me uh, when um, you have the information, a drug can be made for 10 baht per unit? What is it, Cap? Uh, is it cost? Is it, um, hang on, let me go back to the previous one. Is it the uh, fixed cost? Is it variable cost? Is it revenue? Is it price per item? Or is it number of item? Or if it, is it profit cup? What is it cup? A drug can be made for 10 baht per unit. What is it? Variable cost. Variable cost, right. Why is that cup? Why do you think that it's variable cost? What? Keyword tells you that it is variable cost. Per unit. That's right, Cap, per unit. When it is per unit, if it is not cost per unit, it will be price per unit anyway. But in this one, it said made, can be made. That means you are producing. That is this one, it's a cost for sure. And when it said a per unit, so it is variable cost, okay. So in this one, we get the variable cost already. Uh, next, total cost to produce 100 units is 1,500. Uh, 1,500. What is it, Cap? Total cost to produce 100 units is 1,500. In here, uh, this one, it tells us that this is the total cost, right? So from this one, you see the um, total cost. Uh, That come from fixed cost plus variable cost. Okay. Assuming the cost function is linear, uh, is linear. So this must be um, must be specified clearly. Uh -huh. Is linear. So when it is linear, uh, must be in this form. So x is the x to the power of one only. So this is the linear, uh, as we studied before. Okay, we find the rule. I uh, have try to find the rule. Okay, so in this one, how do we gonna find the rule for this one? We said that, uh, we said that cost uh, x in order to produce x unit uh, come from fixed cost. plus variable cost from what we learned from the previous slide uh, cost is um, from fixed cost plus variable cost then I just like um, name this function as cx uh, equals to b uh, assume that the fixed cost is b plus mx whereby x is 
number of units. And M is variable cost. Why is that? If I go back to the previous slide, นะครับ you can see that cost is fixed cost plus variable cost, right? Okay. Cost is from fixed cost plus variable cost. While variable cost, นะครับ is from like number of units multiplied by, นะครับ num uh, multiplied by number of item, นะครับ price per unit. Multiply by number of item. That's why we get the variable cost like this. Okay. Right. Okay. When we get this one already, I just substitute. I have the formula from the value that we know before. Then C X equals to B. I have that is uh, this one. This is the fixed cost. Is 1,500 นะครับ plus 10x. So this one, นะครับ is the cost function, นะครับ that we get from this problem, นะครับ total cost come from 1,000 price of uh, 500 plus 10x. Where x is the units number of units, นะครับ okay. oh, I'm sorry. Let me just change a bit. This one is, this one is not fixed cost. I'm sorry, นะครับ This one is a total cost. So in this one, I have CX equals to B plus 10X. I have in this one. This is just like the standard of the um, cost function. In this one, because you don't know the um, fixed cost yet. I have you don't know the fixed cost yet. Because from the total cost, it said that total cost to produce 100 units is 1,500. I have in here. So this one is a cost function. I have is the rule. When you have to find, I have when you have to find a fixed cost. I have when you have to find a fixed cost in here. We just use the information. Sorry, we just use the information that is given. I have that is given from this one. I have to this. We say that okay. In this one, they say that. For one thousand five hundred, นะครับ equals to B. No, let me just like make it clearer. We say that total cost, นะครับ total cost that is C X. C one thousand. Oh, C one hundred. Sorry, equals to one thousand five hundred, right? Because it said that okay. Cost to produce 100 unit is 1,500, isn't it? Then we just substitute, นะครับ the formula here, นะครับ So that means we have 1,500 equals to b, นะครับ equals to b plus 10 times 100, right? Because this one is said that the um, variable cost for um, 100 items that we produce, นะครับ in here. So it means that in here, have, we just like solve for B. Have, we get 1,500 equals to B plus 1,000. So that means B equals to 1,500 minus 1,000 equals to 500. This is the fixed cost. In here, if you want to check, have, if you want to check, have, um, we just like use this sentence to check. We say that total cost to produce 100 units is 1,500. Then if you just like substitute the fixed cost with 500 and the variable cost, 
we produce 100 units นะครับ sorry we produce 100 units we multiply by the variable cost 10 dollars uh, sorry 10 baht per unit so in this one on the right hand side you get 500 plus 1000 you get 1500 yeah so 1500 equals to 1500 that means our fixed cost is 500 baht นะครับ that is correct one right okay Okay, then up to this point, do you have any question for this example, Kap, anyone? So if you don't have any questions, Nahab, I move on to the next slide. On the next slide, Nahab, based on the same problem, Nahab. A drug can be made for 10 baht per unit. The total cost to produce 100 baht, um, sorry, the total cost to produce 100 unit is 1,500 baht. Then I want you to find the average cost of producing 100 and 1,000 units of the drug. So everyone just like find the answer for the average cost of producing 100 and 1,000 units of the drug. And then just type your answer in the chat box for me, please. I give you three minutes Nahab, to find out the average cost of producing 100 and 1,000 units. Okay, write your answer in the chat box Nahab, when you get it already. Three minutes, Nahab. the time starts now. Um, Tara said 15 baht per 100 units. What about 1,000 units, Cap? How much? Okay. Tara said 10.5. Yep. Okay, so sounds interesting. 10.5. Uh, Not a month, Cap. 10.5 per 100 unit or per 1,000 units, Cap? Or per the same? Thousand, I'm sorry? Per 1,000 units, Cap. Per 1,000 units, right? And what about per 100 units, Cap? Uh, 15 baht, like Tara. Like, like Tara, right? Okay. So that means the cost, Cap, the average cost per different numbers of units are different. If you just like calculate and then you get different values like this. Now, let me just like write down the formula and see the calculation and how we do it together so that you can see how do I can find the um, average cost of producing in different number of units. I say that, okay, in this one, it's C um, average X in here. I just like use this notation equals to CX over x right this is to find the average uh -huh. so if i want to find out uh -huh, c of um c average of 100 uh -huh, that is c 100 divided by x uh -huh. and if you remember uh -huh, for the cost function uh -huh, that is 1,500. So that means the average cost of producing 100 units is 15 baht per unit when you produce 100 units. Wow, the um, C average of 1,000 equals to C 1,000 over X, over 1,000, I'm sorry equals to 500 plus 10 times 1,000 divided by 1,000. Then you get 10,500 divided by 1,000 equals to 10.5 or 10.50 baht per unit. 
So the average cost, oops, sorry. Of producing 1,000 units is 10 baht, 50 star per unit. You can see that when you produce, when you produce more, the average cost is cheaper and cheaper. So that's why when you buy in the wholesaling price, it's a lot cheaper than when you buy in the retail price. This is just like the way to calculate. Okay, so before I move on to the next slide, do you have any questions about this example? Okay, so if you don't have any questions, you can see that this is average cost. Uh, this is average cost. When you have to find the average means that you have to divide it by number of units in here. That's why I say that, okay, it is like um, baht per unit, but you have to specify that when you produce how many units as well, uh, so that it will be the correct one. All right, if you don't have any questions, uh, let's move on to the next slide. The next slide uh, is the same example, uh, same, um, same facts. A drug can be made for 10 baht per unit. The total cost to produce 100 units is 1,500 baht. Uh, Okay, so right now the company sells this drug for 20 baht. I want you to find the function R that gives the revenue from selling X units of drug. Uh -huh. And also I want you to find the profit function P and hence use them to analyze break even point. Uh -huh. Okay, All right. So in this one, uh, I give you five minutes uh, to find first example and second one for me, please. Uh, I can just give you some hints that the, um, the, the function R is easier than um, the function P. Uh, okay. So now I give you five minutes. Uh, when you get the answer already, please type in the chat box cup what is the function R and what is the function P? Two minutes left. If you get the revenue function, just write it down in the chat box. And if you get profit function, just also write the, um, the function in the chat box as well. One minute left. Oh, great. But Dipan just have the answer already for the revenue function. Okay. Twenty seconds left, Nahab, everyone. Okay, but if I got the um got the um 
profit function as well that's great นะครับ good to try นะครับ now let's see นะครับ in this one the company sell the um this drug for 20 bahts นะครับ that means every time นะครับ or every unit of selling um this company sell 20 bahts so that means if you would like to see the revenue when they sell x unit you just multiply นะครับ um price per unit นะครับ you just multiply price per unit 20 by number of units so that means the revenue function rx equals to 20x นะครับ that is correct นะครับปฏิพันธ์ for your answer นะครับ this is the revenue function yeah okay now let's talk about the um, next example find the profit function p นะครับ okay for, um, just this one first px equals what you know that okay profit come from revenue subtracted by cost isn't it so then we had the um, revenue function in here I have we said that px equals to revenue function that is 20x cost function we had from the previous slide I have that you um you help each other to find out I have the the cost function so the cost function is 500 uh -huh. plus 10x uh -huh. this is a cost function that we have got so yeah this one uh -huh. um, but if uh, your one is correct too then we just simplify it you get 20x subtracted by 500 subtracted by 10x so the profit function นะครับ equals to 10x minus 500นะครับ this is the answer for the profit function p okay any question for the profit function p <coughs> we find from revenue function subtracted by cost function and then you substitute the revenue and cost by its function that we calculated before ครับ so if you don't have any question lastly we move on to the next phrase of this example we have to um, analyze the break even point. If you remember, break even point come from this calculation, have everyone. Break even point is cost equals to revenue. Now, have this is break even point. Uh, they said that okay, break even when cost equals to revenue. So in this one, uh, you have to find when cost equals to revenue. Uh, it's easy นะครับ you have cost function นะครับ you have cost function that is 500 plus 10x right you just sub um, substitute the cost with the cost function here equals to revenue revenue function is 20x right okay then you solve this equation we say that okay 500 equals to 20x minus 10x then 500 equals to 10x then we get x equals to 500 equals to 10 um over 10 then x equals to 500 over 10 that is 50 and a half so the answer is that the break even point is 50 units okay and then you can answer uh -huh. this is when um when cost and revenue are equals uh -huh. now let's check up uh, when we check uh -huh, if you want to check uh -huh, we find revenue of um, 50 units uh -huh. it's equals to 20 times 50 equals to 1000 yeah okay what about cost of producing 50 units it's equals to 500 uh -huh, plus 10 times 50 
equals to 500 plus 500 equals to 1,000. So you can see that when you produce นะครับ50 units and sell for 50 units นะครับ the price and the cost um the 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 revenue and the cost are absolutely the same. So that's why this is what we call break even point. นะครับ Okay. All right, ครับ So this one you can see that we know the way in order to find price นะครับ uh, or revenue we find cost we find break even point already นะครับ by just like formulating this thing in the term of the linear function right okay right okay then นะครับ up to this point do you have any questions for this uh, example yes do we have to write the answer in words like wording question um you should have like this one okay thank you you're welcome any other questions cup anyone all right so if you don't have any questions i have i'll move on to the next example this one i want you to try by yourself once again uh -huh. in this example a soft drink manufacturer has a fixed cost of 28000 bahts a production cost 7 baht per each can a can of soft drink sell for 14 14 baht each now i want you to find the cost function revenue function and profit function and also use this information to analyze break even point of this situation uh, okay so this one i want you to answer three things hang on sorry four things the first one cost function second one revenue function uh -huh. third one profit function and fourth one uh -huh. break even point uh -huh. break even point so find four of them for me, please. I have five minutes. I have spend five minutes to find cost function, revenue function, profit function, and break even point. Up. Okay, time start now. I have everyone, please, um, just like um, do it by yourself. I have don't just wait for my answer. I have. So for anyone who just get the answer already, you may write down. I have. The answer in the chat box again. Uh -huh. So just use cost function as CX. Uh -huh. Revenue function is RX. Profit function is PX. Uh -huh. And then uh, number of can. That is break even. So now Padipan just give us the answer again นะครับ for the cost function Okay this question นะครับ this example is not difficult we just like um, use the same idea as we did from the previous example นะครับ Okay now the time is up นะครับ let's see นะครับ for the total cost นะครับ in order to find the cost function นะครับ come from um, fixed cost plus variable cost นะครับ for the cost นะครับ that is fixed cost plus variable cost for fixed cost นะครับ or fc here fixed cost is 28000 นะครับ plus variable cost variable cost in here it said that okay um, production cost is 7 baht for each can this is variable cost I have seven baht per each can. So if you produce X can, this one must be seven X. I have. So that means for the total cost, I have it is seven X plus twenty eight thousand or twenty eight thousand plus seven X the same thing. I have. So if you want to just like put them in order, I have fixed cost plus variable cost is twenty eight thousand plus seven X. I have. This is cost function. Next, revenue function. For revenue function, um, I just circle them in green color. Uh -huh. When you sell, uh -huh, you can sell 
14บาท each นะครับ per each can so the revenue function is 14x นะครับ is 14x this is the revenue function นะครับ okay so what about profit function profit function นะครับ is revenue subtracted by cost revenue subtracted by cost นะครับ as we just like had before นะครับ in this one นะครับ profit is revenue subtracted by cost is here so in this one นะครับ um it is revenue that is 14x subtracted by cost that is 28,000 plus 7x it is 7x minus 28,000 that is profit function right okay when you get the profit function already นะครับ uh, now it comes to break even points นะครับ okay um, in this case we have to just substitute นะครับ we know that break even point is when revenue equals to cost นะครับ that is the point that both of them are equals so revenue function is 14x นะครับ cost function is 28,000 plus 7x นะครับ that means you get 7x equals to 28,000 x equals to 28,000 divided um, divided by 7 so นะครับ break even point is 4,000 cans and then you can answer here if you want to check you just substitute นะครับ the revenue of 4,000 cans with the cost of 4,000 cans let's try นะครับ in this one um, if we try to check revenue of 4,000 นะครับ it is 14 times 4,000 while the cost นะครับ of 4,000 is 28,000 plus 7 times 4,000 so then you try to equate them So 14 times 4,000 that is 56,000 on the left hand side. On the right hand side is 56,000 as well. Now they are equal. Um, they are equal for these um, two sides, um, both revenue and cost. That's why this one is correct. Then the break even point is 4,000 can. This is the correct one, right? Okay, ครับ. For anyone who answer in the chat box, นะครับ, you did a good job. But for anyone who didn't answer in the chat box, นะครับ, you might do it slower than um other classmates, นะครับ. Don't worry. But just like um try to see that this is the way to solve this problem, นะครับ. Okay, right. Okay, then, นะครับ. In this example, นะครับ. Up to this point, do we have any questions, ครับ? Anyone? So if you don't have any question, นะครับ, this is a kind of application in the graph, นะครับ, when we use it to apply with the uh, break-even points, นะครับ, in cost and revenue when you have to calculate, นะครับ, we, it comes to be the things like this, นะครับ, okay. But I mean like in the advanced courses, when you have to study for the cost, นะครับ, and revenue, it might not be the linear one. But the concepts are the same. นะครับ total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost and break even point is when the revenue equals to the cost. นะครับ just that. But for cost function, revenue function and profit function, it might be varied according according to that situation because sometimes they have some more factors in order to calculate for the cost and revenue. นะครับ something like that. For example, we may say that okay. Um, the more that you can produce, the less cost that you can just like save something like that. It might not be the linear one. นะครับ 
something like that. It might be the exponential ones. Okay. But in this class, we just end it with the, um, the uh, linear. I have just that. Okay. So if you don't have any questions, let me move on to the next slide. This is another application in um, the linear graph and the solution that we need to have. In this one, we talk about supply and demand. For supply and demand, you may have heard before or some of you may studied in um, economics class before. When you have to produce something and um, as I mean, if you are the seller or producer of the goods, you produce some goods while the customers would like to buy that goods. When you produce the goods or you sell the good, that is the supply side. When you are the customer and you purchase the goods, you want to buy some goods that is on the demand side. So supply and demand for the products are related to its price. That means uh, when you produce 1,000 pieces of products, it doesn't mean that um, every customer would like those 1,000 pieces of products. Uh, um, they have like some, some of the factor that is related, that is about price. Sometimes if the price is too cheap, not many people may want it. Sometimes when the price is too expensive, people cannot afford it and then they cannot buy. So demand and supply, you have to um, talk about like the price that are related as well. Now, let me just like show you for the ideal supply and demand for the chart, how the supply and demand look like. Okay. I talk about the first side that is the demand side first. Sorry, this one. When we talk about the graph na hap, on the y-axis, it's about the price. On the x-axis is quantity. Hap. Now let's talk about the demand, the graph of the demand. This one. This is the demand graph. I have. So, how do you understand? How do we understand this graph? We said that okay. When the price, I have, is at exact point here, I have, people just like don't want much product. But when I have, the price is cheaper. When the price is cheaper, we just read from this one. When the price is cheaper, the quantity that the product is needed by the customer is more and more and more. Okay, this is just like how do we gonna read this demand line? Now, talk about the supply graph or supply line that I just want you to see. This is the um, supply line. So how do you understand um, or how do you gonna read this graph for the supply? So you can see that for the supply, it's a term of like um, producer that we have to think about this. When the price is um, like this amount is like still cheap one, not many producer, not many producer would like to produce not many producer would like to produce that product. But when the price is increasing, when the price is increasing, more producer would like to produce more goods. More producer would like to produce more goods. That's why the graph goes to this way. That means when people sorry, when the, the when the price is increasing, there is inspiration for the producer to produce more goods. That's why the supply is increasing in here. Okay, so this is the demand and supply line that you may have seen in here. Now, if I combine these two lines together, what do we get?
you can see that when I talk about demand and supply, if I plot, <coughs> I'm sorry, if I plot this graph, นะครับ together in the same in the same graph, นะครับ in the same uh, yeah in the same graph in here, you can see that there is a point in here, นะครับ that these two graph, นะครับ intersect. This um this point we call it as equilibrium. It occurs when the price is such that quantity demanded by consumer is correctly balanced by the quantity that producers wish to supply or wish to um wish um to produce. This is the equilibrium point. Okay. So this one, the price P1 is the price that quantity demand by consumer is balanced by the quantity Q1 that producer which to supply. Just give me um, a minute and a half. Okay. okay, let's continue. In this one, when we know about the equilibrium point already, supply and demand are equal at the point where the supply line intersects the demand line. This point is what we call equilibrium point. The Y coordinates is the equilibrium price in here. Is the equilibrium price. So that means this point is the best point in this market. When this quantity demanded by consumers and correctly balanced by the quantity of the, um, of the producers. Uh -huh. If you say that, okay, what if the price is more than this? If the price is more than this, uh -huh, the customer needs less or needs fewer products. But what if the price is decreasing? Uh -huh. If the price is de decreasing, what does it mean? If the price is decreasing lower than P1, it means that um, the producer or the supplier has less inspiration to produce the goods. Uh -huh. So that's why it comes to like um, the um, there are fewer supply in here uh -huh, if the price is cheaper than this. So that's why the equilibrium is the balance point between um, demand and supply. Uh -huh. So this is the point that you have to know. We have a couple of words. Uh -huh. Demand, supply, and equilibrium. Uh -huh. um, while we are talking about demand and supply, we have to talk about price and quantity. Okay. So now, uh -huh. before I move on to the next slide, do you have any questions about the demand supply line and it, its equilibrium? Okay. So if you don't have any questions about this chart, this graph, and the keywords that I use in here already, we have like the next um, example that I just like want to show you. How do we going to calculate for the demand, supply, and its equilibrium? In this example, in this example, you can see that okay, the quantity, the quantity demand each month of MU T-shirt is 250, 250 T-shirts. When the price, when the unit price is 150 baht per one T-shirt. The quantity demand each month is 1,000. When the unit price is 120. The supplier will market 750 t-shirts if the unit price is 90 at a unit price of 100 baht. Uh -huh. um, the supplier are willing to market 100 and um, 1,500 t-shirts. Uh -huh. This is the information that we received. It said that if both demand and supply equations are known to be linear, Determine the demand and supply equation. 
what are the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price นะครับ in this one how do we gonna do this one okay so firstly นะครับ we have to interpret the um the problem first okay now let's see นะครับ for the first two lines they talk about demand side isn't it okay because they talk about demand of each month when the price is this demand of each month is 1000 when the price is this okay so they talk about the demand okay next two lines it talks about supply นะครับ supply we might get 750 shares if the unit price is 90 นะครับ and then at unit price of 100 supplier willing to market 1500 uh, t-shirt okay these are supply now what are we going to do if you remember in here นะครับ um, I just like combine the knowledge from demand and supply graph that I told you before together with the graph concept that we studied นะครับ okay now let's see นะครับ I talk about sorry I talk about demand first if you remember I have for the demand line, I have for the demand line, it was like this, right? This is demand. Y axis is price, X axis is quantity. Okay. Now let's try plotting. I have easily. We say that, okay, MU t shirt is 250. Assume that this is 250. The price is 250. I have, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I have the, the demand, the quantity is 250. I have not the price here. Quantity is 250. While the price is 150. I have in here. Okay. Now, it said that quantity demand is 1,000 when the price unit is 120. Assume that I said, okay, this, this point. Price is 120, I have quantity is 1,000. So what do we get from this graph? From this graph, we have learned two points, isn't it? Okay. If I just substitute this one with the coordinate between price นะครับ and um between quantity and price, I use quantity นะครับ two hundred fifty, then the price is one fifty. Right. This is the first point. Next, นะครับ for the second point, the quantity is 1,000 in x-axis, while the price is 120. What do we get for this one? If you remember for this one, when you get two points, the things that you can find is that you can find slope, isn't it? After you get the slope, from point slope form, you can find equation. Uh -huh. This is the thing that we can do. Similar to supply side, okay. For the supply side, okay, I do similar way. Uh -huh. For the supply side, supplier market 700 t-shirt, so, sorry, 750 t-shirt. Uh -huh. Okay, assume that said this is 750. When you have price at 90. Okay. And for the price at 100. The quantity that 
um, supplier willing to market is 1,500. So I just like change this one to be the coordinates. I have the first coordinate is 1,000, hang on, it's this point. Seven fifty, comma fifty um ninety. Have, that is the first point. For second point, it is one thousand five hundred, comma one hundred. This is the second point. Then you can find slope. You can find equation as well. Have. So for this one, I will begin with the demand first. I have. So the slope is negative one over 25 uh -huh, here. So for the equation, I get y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. I get 25y minus 3,000. Five, um, 750 equals to minus x plus 250. I have this is this is the um, what to say this is the um, demand equation I have okay. Now for the um, supply equation, I have we do the same thing. Slope for MS equals to ninety minus one hundred over 750 minus 1,500. Uh, on the yes. demand equation on the slope, you wrote 100, 150 minus 200. Shouldn't mm -hmm. it be 150 minus 120? Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 150 minus 120, right? Okay, yes, yes. Tab. Thank you, sure. Tab.
yeah it's negative one over 25 thank you for telling me นะครับ I wrote the wrong one okay so for the slope of supply นะครับ it's like this one over 75 and then for the equation นะครับ So um, the um, supply equation, uh, y equals to x plus six thousand over seventy five. Uh, when you would like to find this one, uh, for equilibrium, uh, for equilibrium. Demand equals to supply. Then in this point, you just like um, try to just like solve this one by substituting y equals to x plus six thousand over twenty five over seventy five into this part. So that means if you get, if you get twenty five times x plus six thousand over seventy five, have. It will be equals to the half on the right hand side. It is like minus x plus four thousand. So you get x plus six thousand equals to negative three x plus twelve thousand. Uh, here we get four x equals to six thousand x equals to six thousand over four equals to one thousand five hundred so the equilibrium quantity is 1,500 units. Then you just substitute นะครับ to find the equilibrium price นะครับ to find the equilibrium price. That means you have to find y นะครับ So in this one we say that y equals to um 1,500 plus 6,000 over 75 นะครับ That means y equals to 7,500 over 75, uh, that is 100. Uh, so the equilibrium price is 100 baht per unit. And then you can answer. Okay. Right. Okay. For this example, do you have any question? Have anyone? All right. So if you don't have any question, นะครับ Okay. Um. Before we finish the class, let me just like tell you like this, นะครับ Actually, we have two slide left, นะครับ That is about rate of change. Um, for that means for this one, I will not include in our quiz. Nah, our quiz on this coming Thursday. Nah, everyone do not miss this quiz. Nah, because it has a score. For the quiz that we are going to have on this coming Thursday, I will have like three question for you. Nah, I'll have three question for you. Nah, um, we have forty minutes only in order to do this quiz. Nah, the quiz will be start at ten. 
20 sharp นะครับ10 20 sharp that means from 10 o'clock to 10 20 you can ask me on anything I'll be in the zoom room นะครับ so that means if you just like want to read and practice by yourself นะครับ you can just like um, do it by yourself without just like joining a zoom room but bear in mind that at 10 20 sharp นะครับ everyone must be in the zoom room นะครับ um, every of you has to turn on your camera นะครับ and microphone while you are doing um, your quiz and then um, we do the same as we did on our exam that means you have to just like try to just like put your your camera down to let me see what you are doing นะครับ what you are writing here นะครับ and um, after 40 minutes you have to submit นะครับ you have to submit your work นะครับ and then we will continue talking about the next part นะครับ we will continue talking about the next part um, for our um, lesson นะครับ and just a little bit more นะครับ that I just want to tell you because I just like see that on this coming Wednesday my timetable is clashed with another meeting นะครับ that I cannot miss that one so I decide to do like this not to make you confused นะครับ not to make you confused um, the makeup class should be on next Wednesday instead นะครับ next Wednesday instead so that means this week we still have the regular class Mon uh, sorry Tuesday that is today and um, this coming Thursday for coming Thursday the second half of our class will be um, the quiz นะครับ you start the quiz sorry um, the when uh, the Thursday class we have the the quiz from um, 10 20 to 11 o'clock นะครับ after 11 it will be the regular class นะครับ um, and then we don't have makeup class on this week นะครับ the makeup class will be on next week instead okay right okay then นะครับ for the content of our quiz it will be on chapter four only it will be on chapter four only so that means there will be about like the slope นะครับ the um, equations linear equation by just like um, I might give you a point นะครับ or um, I give you a slope or I give you two points and then you have to find the slope and then just like put it in the form นะครับ in the point slope form or I might give you the um, applying question like in term of demand supply in term of um, cost and revenue นะครับ something like that okay right um, up to this point do we have any questions cap anyone um, are you going to give us some exercises uh, for preparation I can give you some exercises นะครับ some exercises but you don't have to submit it to me it will be the exercise and the answer so that you can see how you're gonna do it นะครับ okay you, I'll post this exercise um, this afternoon นะครับ for you it, it might be a bit late afternoon because I just like have another class after this นะครับ